we already know how to find moments of inertia for point masses. We multiply the mass by the distance away from our axis of rotation, squared, and we add up all those point masses. But what about if we have a continuous distribution of mass? In this case, we can do the same thing, but now we split up our mass into infinitesimally small little bits, dm, and then add up an infinite number of those to get our moment of inertia for a continuous mass distribution. I'm gonna show you an example with this line where we can split up this line that spans from negative L over two to positive L over two on the x-axis we're going to try and determine the moment of inertia of this about this central axis here, this z-axis. But first, to get our minds around integrating things and how that works, I'm gonna give you an example of integrating the mass of this line. If you already feel like you understand this stuff, you can skip ahead. If I wanna know the mass of this object, I can define my little bit of mass dm, and then I add up all those little bits of mass to get my overall mass. If my overall mass is m, then integral of dm gives us m. Fine. Another way of doing this is you can define a linear mass density as mass per unit length, m over l, which now lets us say that the amount of mass on here in terms of my length is, since this linear mass density is a mass per length, if we assume that our density is constant throughout, then that ratio is going to be the same throughout. That means that lambda equals m over l, it also equals dm over dx. We can rearrange that to say that dm is equal to lambda times dx. We can now substitute this in to our integral and say that my mass is equal to the integral of dm, which is lambda dx or m over l dx. We integrate over the range of our object, which goes from x equals negative L over two to x equals positive L over two. Noting that M and L are both constants, so they come out front and we end up with just x coming out the end of the integral. We evaluate that between the limits of positive L over two and negative L over two to get M over L times the quantity L over two minus a negative L over two, which becomes a positive that gives us an L once we combine L over two plus L over two, the L's cancel and we're left with M. All right, you might think that was pointless because we just said, well, we just called it M and integral of DM is M anyway, but hopefully that process makes it clear what's going on. We split this up into a little piece and we add up an infinite number of those little pieces as we go all the way along based on what we know about those little pieces. We're now going to do this with this slightly more complicated integral to see if we can calculate a moment of inertia for this bar. We'll integrate x squared dm. Now we have our dm from before, which is going to be m over l dx. The m over l is constant, so it can come out front. And we're left with the integral of x squared dx. This is not quite as trivial, we have x squared, so we have to add one to the exponent. We get x cubed, divide by the resulting exponent, divided by three, or m over l times one third x cubed evaluated between our limits. We can then factor out the one third and m over l and evaluate our limits. We now have l over two cubed minus a negative l over two cubed, which ends up giving us one third m over l times L cubed over eight plus L cubed over eight once the negatives cancel. Adding those together, you end up with a one quarter from the inside. So one third m over L times L cubed times one quarter. And one third times one quarter then gives us one twelfth for a final answer of our moment of inertia being one twelfth ml squared. Lovely. So you can do this. This is for a one dimensional inner integral. You can do this for two dimensional, three dimensional integrals as you consider moments of inertia of different shapes. You can also rely on other people having already done that and look them up in a table like this. And we'll find the one we found we did before. We just did. I is equal to ML squared over 12. We just found that. And indeed, it's there in the table. 
Yay, we did it right. But where do these things come from? The same sort of process just applied to different shapes.